Captain, I hope you made the right decision by siding with MSI. Of course I made the right decision. Why wouldn't I? And speaking of making decisions, this is Lover of Ladies. Thank you for tuning in to this week's The Outer Worlds. Appreciate the love and support. So while I was on this ship the last time, I did notice that there was a strange machine in one of the utility closets, I'm assuming. So I'm just going to ask Ida what's that about, basically. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? So, know anything about the auto-mechanical gathering dust in the janitor's closet? The unit is a cleaning sam. Hawthorne brought it on board some cycles ago, I'm sure with the intent to modify it. But I've never seen it up and running. Alex likely recorded progress notes detailing his efforts to modify Sam. If you check the terminal in your captain's quarters, we may be able to determine what work remains in order for Sam to properly operate. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll talk to you later, Ida. See you soon, Captain. Let me go to my captain's quarters and check out what notes there are. Let me see here. By the way, I just love my room. Like, look at this. Beautiful, beautiful details here. Like, this game is forever phenomenal. Messages for Denise. Wait, hold on. Let me see. Recent message list. Hey there, could be I'm making a fool out of myself for sending you this message. I've been up all night poring over those manuals you brought me. There's a good chance I'm pretty delirious right now. I just wanted to thank you for going through the trouble. You didn't have to help me out, but you did anyway. Oh, this is from Thomas back in Edgewater. Aww, that's so cute. Okay. Uh, messages for Alex Hawthorne. Well, hold on. Let me just look at Sam first. Okay, so do not forget. You found a discarded sanitation and maintenance auto mechanical in Emerald Val's scrape heap during your last job. It should not be too difficult to get it up and running. For a few key modifications, I can envision a comeback capable variant. Some might say a clean, mean killing machine. Should be fun. Removal of factory standard part Sud Steeper was successful. Delivery of comeback modified replacement part Acid Steeper has been delayed. Progress setback is estimated now to be a solid three months. Not like I have more pressing matters to attend to, uh, but I do. I'm giving up hope on the delivery. The part is lost in transit and it's not turning up anytime soon. But good news. I heard from a fellow who knows a gal who knows the broker who overcharged me for the information regarding the location of an acid steeper I can or flitch. The part was sent to an old storage facility in Roseway. I sure never thought I'll go back to that pit. Good thing Auntie abandoned it years ago. I'll pick it up following this next pit stop back to Emerald Val. Wells wants me to chaperone some person of interest. Details to come later. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Roseway. So, Hawthorne, the last captain here, planned to replace the Sud Steeper but never picked it up from Roseway. Which means maybe we could go to Roseway? Let me see. Where would Roseway be? Huh. I don't know. I'll probably ask later. Let me, hold on, let me see something. Welcome back, Captain. 
How can I be of assistance? Uh, well, I guess there's no way for me to ask, but let me see here. You mentioned an ether wave drama. I like to see it. Do I really want to do that quest? Probably. Um. Uh, yeah. Fuck it. Why not? Certainly, Captain. I was hoping you would ask. It was the law forsaken parasites. I had become obsessed. Okay. My quest to stop them. To avenge my partner, Philip. Oh no, he died. Of course. My ex-partner, Bernice. <gasps> and Lieutenant Jurgen. Damn, all these people are dead. Yo, she's bad. They brought me to Rizzo's distillery. But it wasn't just the triple distilled deliciousness of Rizzo Spectrum brand vodka that I found there. Product placement. That's nasty. It was death. I made sure the brain eaters paid the price. But at what cost to me? She's mad cute. I gotta admit, this little episode is pretty nice. I love it. <gasps> Yo, what is that? Oh, I am so scared for her. It's you. This is the Halcyon News Network with breaking news. Halcyon Helen has been murdered. What? Administrator Ludovico of Rizzo's refused to answer the big question on everyone's mind. Like who did it? Will Spectrum Vodka's next spokesperson be? Oh, you ain't shit for that. Special investigation must be concluded first. Captain, we have a communication coming in from one Administrator Ludovico. Get off the transmission, Cedric. We agreed to let me do the negotiating. Law be with you, friend. I am Administrator Ludovico of the famed Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. But there's no need to stand on formality. You may address me as Mr. Let me guess. This is about Halsey and Helen's murder. Her death is the tragedy of our lifetime. As the face of our new product line, her murder is a stain on the Rizzo's brand. She was scheduled to unveil our newest product, Spectrum Brown, before this tragic event. But we cannot move forward with our unveiling until we apprehend the killer. And your first thought was to come to me. All right, Ludovico, that's enough. You don't know what you're doing. Let me handle this. Captain Hawthorne, so glad to finally have a word with you. I would have been so disappointed if Ludovico monopolized your attention. Cedric Kincannon, Sublight Underground. I'm so glad we're hiring a third party investigator. No one wants to see a troop of UDL guards stomping all over my hotel, least of all me. The murder of Halcyon Helen is a heinous assault on this colony. I look forward to watching you find the miscreant responsible and drag them out of the shadows. Huh. Well, I'm having trouble seeing the death of a two-bit actor as an assault on the colony. That sounds really mean. I'm not going to say that. I was shaken by the news myself. Helen brought a lot of joy to this colony. You're a compassionate person, Captain. And you're right. Halcyon Helen was a talented woman. She had a gift for transforming her art into wealth. You would not believe the money she made us on Dissident Busters. For law's sake, Cedric, could you show a little discretion and not bring up your contraband operations in front of an outsider? Oh, fuck Please, you too. Lou. Sublight Underground is built on discretion. I'm establishing rapport with our new contractor. Let's not give her the impression that you can't be trusted. 
Do you really want to do this right now, Cedric? You want to antagonize me while I'm negotiating a contract. Because I promise you, I'll win. <laughs> Gentlemen, please, as far as I'm concerned, you're both idiots. First sensible thing I've heard all day. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, my apologies, Mr. Ludovico. That was unprofessional of me. Captain, I'm Constable Maria Keene. Hiring a third-party investigator was my idea. I've been studying your dossier. You are an extraordinary scientist. If your talents extend to forensics, then you may be exactly what we need. As far as I'm concerned, you're the ideal inspector for this case. Um, shouldn't this be the constable's job? Constable? I hate to admit it, but I'm a little out of my depth here. I'm used to dealing with rowdy VIPs from Byzantium, not murder. Please, Captain. I'm asking you to help us. While you're pursuing your investigation, we'll make you a guest of honor at the Grand Colonial. Hmm. You can count on me. The future of our complex may depend on your success. I'll leave you in the constable's care. Mr. Kincannon and I must have a word. Fine. Bud Rizzo's is paying for that hotel room. I can't tell you how grateful I am for your help. And even though they may not show their gratitude, I know Administrator Ludovico and Mr. Kincannon appreciate your involvement. Mr. Kincannon could lose his spaceport if board authorities took over the investigation. And if Rizzo's is forced to cancel its unveiling, we might never recover. Wow. Helen must have been pretty popular if her death could put an end to operations. Helen was more than popular. She gave something to this colony that no product line could ever provide. Real happiness. No one has ever been as well known or as well loved. Uh, outside of our courageous business leaders. Hmm, you sound a bit worn out. Me? Worn out? <laughs> Perish the notion. My days are filled with catering to the oh-so-reasonable requests of Mr. Ludovico and Mr. Kincannon. What's not to like? They seem like jackasses. Your words, not mine. Please don't take my lack of disagreement as anything other than fatigue. I am a content, productive, and happy member of our society. You seem content. You could have dealt with this. I represent the law, Captain. But what's happening between Mr. Kincannon and the Administrator is... politics. Politics are not my area of expertise. The law is simple. Politics are complicated. Sounds like America. Relax. Well, all right. I got everything I need. Transmission terminated. Captain. We are now clear to land at the Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. What can you tell me about Eridanos? Eridanos is a hydrogen helium gas giant, distinguished by a well-defined ring system. The Eridanos Atmospheric Complex is a system of land masses propelled through a thin layer of the upper atmosphere, where humans are potentially capable of surviving. I don't know why they're trusting me to catch Halcy and Helen's killer. There are several reasons why someone would hire your services. In descending order of likelihood, they are as follows. Desperation. Confusion. Damn. Damn. Mistaken identity. Damn. Inebriation. Hey. And genuine faith in your abilities. Okay, at least there's some positives. Thanks, Ada. All right, let's go to Iridanos. Quick touch down on the atmospheric complex in Eridanos. All right, let me change my journal here. I'm gonna do, oh, it's already changed for me. Perfect. All right, so my usual two, Parvati and Nyoka. Stay it's... safe out there. Thank you, Ada, you're so sweet. All right, ladies, it is time to rock and roll. Whoa, what is this? This is a very cool place. 
And yes, I am doing one of two DLCs that the Aldo Worlds has released. Okay, so Oh wow. This is a job? Yep. It feels more like a vacation. Hmm, <laughs> Nioka's already loving this. I mean, can't blame her. Look at this place. Very 1920s style. Beautiful. And I see we have some company. Hello, hello, hello there. Hope your atmospheric entry wasn't too troublesome. As a guest of honor, you deserve the best in comfort. Sublight Salvage and Shipping Underground, or Slug, as we like to call ourselves, is delighted to welcome you to Eridanos. I'm the Grand Colonial Head Bellhop. I'm here to grab your bags and direct you, the inspector, to the Grand Ballroom, which was the scene of the crime. Can you fill me in on the details of the murder? I can try. I was the one who found Helen's body in the Grand Ballroom. Corpse wasn't in the best shape. Aside from that, I don't know a whole lot. Helen was supposed to host the unveiling for Rizzo's newest product, Spectrum Brown. Until you catch the killer, the unveiling's been indefinitely postponed. Helen's death has been a shock for many. A lot of people are inconsolable. Hell, even Black Hole Birdie, Helen's bow has wandered off. Some folks think he had something to do with the murder, but I don't believe it. He did it. It's always the boyfriend. <laughs> I still don't understand why anyone would have it in for Ms. Helen. Folks get heated when it comes to serials and their actors, I suppose. Was she a diversive figure? Not particularly. But I think some folks were jealous of her success, or otherwise viewed her as a threat. Reckon how she came about her fame didn't help. How she gets so famous? Why, she was a natural. People fell in love with her. She managed to wrangle up a following all on her own. She ended up about as famous and high-runged as your average VP, which rubbed a lot of Byzantines the wrong way. Actors ain't supposed to get preferential treatment. Let's see here. Oh, I already spoke briefly about the Spectrum unveiling, or lack thereof. It's still an awful shame. A lot of folks looking forward to that. Okay, well, I thought you worked for Slug, not Rizzo's. I do. Rizzo's happened to rent out the Grand Colonial Ballroom from Slug for the unveiling. A nice, mutually beneficial event. But the murder's gone and ruined that. Along with... Nine out of ten of my favorite cereals. Anyway, I think I've held you up long enough. Once you're ready, head down to the lobby. The ballroom is just behind the elevators. Meanwhile, I'll grab your bags. Bags? What bags? Uh, you're making fun, right? Your luggage. Belongings? Kits? Nope. Nope. Wherever you keep what you ain't wearing. You're still giving me a pretty blank look. Suppose it's... None of my business, but do you just wear the same set of clothes all the time? Oh my god, you're breaking the fourth wall. Of course I do. Are you telling me you don't? <laughs> well, uh, reckon I can respect your candor, even if it scares me a smidge. Anyhow, I'll look for you in the grand ballroom later. Hope you can unravel this mystery, Inspector. Ha! <laughs> I like how they addressed it. This is so nice. I like this game already. All right. I could have sworn you just said we aren't allowed to depart. Wow, this is nice. Very fancy, yeah. Oh. Oh. Janitor. Greetings, Inspector. No yeah. need to check in here. Your paperwork has all been processed. Oh, wow. You should be able to find the Colonial right ahead. Say no more. Let's go. Wow. Oh, my stars. This is the hotel? Yeah, it is. I only ever seen a place like this in periodicals. Or that one episode of Agent Khan. You're so adorable. I love my companions. Wow. This is... A lot of upkeep here. Look at decorations. It really is a terrible shame. I absolutely adored her cereal. All right, let's get inside. A 
I've always wondered what that mascot's got in his hands. What's in the box? <laughs> I'm done. Let me just... Why did I do that? Hold on. There you go. I don't want to cause any type of unnecessary attention. This is all just some sort of publicity stunt. That is so insensitive. What a... Hello. Since you're staring. So, do I go this way? Okay. Ooh. Black hole birdies disappeared, you know. That poor fellow must be inconsolable. All right, I'm going in. Sweet. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, thank the law. Inspector, you don't know how relieved I am to see you. Uh, Constable Keane? Nice to meet you. We spoke over the ether wave. Constable Maria Keane. It's good to meet you in person, Inspector. Dr. Goodnight. Ecstatic to make your various acquaintances and so on. Are we finished with the pleasantries? There's something I'm excited to show you. What have you got for me, Doctor? An extraordinary contraption. You'll love it. Our coroner has developed a device which may prove useful in your investigation. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Damn. Oh, please. You make it sound as if I'm turning over stolen goods. Behold, my discrepancy amplifier. Mm -hmm. Hold it in your hands. Feel the way it hums with ontological potential. Yo, I am loving Dr. Goodnight. She's slowly becoming my favorite character. How, um, what does this thing do exactly? I'm so glad you asked. Allow me to explain. The discrepancy amplifier uses a deterministic model of our universe to detect the discrepancy between what should be and what actually is. Then it renders any discrepancies visible by using the power of... Magnification. So, uh, so it's a magnifying glass. It's, yes. It's a magnifying glass, but an extraordinarily powerful one. It looks through the glass of reality itself. I'm contractually prohibited from endorsing off-brand technology, but I'll bend that rule just this once. You'll want to peer into the amplifier and examine the crime scene. Okay. Greetings, Inspector. Thanks to the half genius, half mad scientific mind of Dr. Goodnight, you've been granted the discrepancy amplifier, a handy investigation device for uncovering clues throughout Iridanos. Make sure to equip the amplifier in a weapon slot before you continue your hunt for Helen's killer. All right. Let me do that then i'll just take this one off then put this bad boy on 25 Ugh. okay um this one to catch helen's killer you need to use the discrepancy amplifier scope to reveal clues not visible to the naked eye <gasps> once you locate some evidence aim directly at it while zooming in with a scope and press the interact button to analyze it? Yo! Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry? Yo! Okay. Okay, I see footsteps. This unit has detected a discrepancy related to Halcyon Helen. Unscheduled expiration of. Begin amplification. You can talk? The discrepancy amplifier has been programmed to function as a helpful and perceptive aid to the enterprising inspector in the absence of a reliable deputy. Oh, you'll love this. Amplifier, tell the inspector about your features. Please do not interrupt the discrepancy amplifier. Damn. The discrepancy amplifier is programmed to take instruction from its registered or designated inspector. How curious. I must have set its impertinence levels to flagrant. This unit's Ooh. features include Shade. an automated personality simulator. This unit has been programmed to simulate joy and satisfaction in assisting you. Let's get started. Tell me about this discrepancy you found. 
This footprint stands out from the normally spotless floor of the Grand Ballroom. Typically, the ballroom is cleaned twice daily, which means this must have been made by either Helen or her assailant or assailants. Discrepancy amplifier, do the size of these footprints match anything you have on record? Footprint is a teller made 8.75, suggesting that its owner was very particular about their shoe size. It is also the exact size that Halcyon Helen typically prefers. There are traces of dirt throughout the footprint. Amplifier, can you analyze the dirt? The dirt carries traces of fertilizer, as well as the faint signs of crushed purpleberries and grass. Grass, fertilizer, and purpleberries can all be found in the purpleberry orchard, located not far from the Grand Colonial. So Helen must have been at the orchards before she died. This deduction appears sound. Good work, Inspector. I had a feeling we'd make some progress once we brought you onto the case. You'll need Administrator Ludovico to grant you access to the orchards. Contact him through the secure access terminal in your penthouse suite. I have Check a in penthouse? With the concierge. Your room should be ready by now. If it isn't, I may have to go shake someone by the collar. Don't mind us, folks. Normal inspectors doing normal inspector things. Nyoko saw me taking her money. Yo, but bro, I really do like you, though. The Purpleberry Orchard. And a footprint. Inspector, that was absolutely marvelous. Beautifully deduced. With the help of my discrepancy amplifier, of course. I like a word with you. Ah, I was waiting for this. Yes, of course. I'm only too eager to cooperate. Tell me about the body. What's the cause of death? My apologies, Inspector. I've not yet finished my autopsy. Come back later. Um, I'd like to know m a little more about you. Oh, why I'm flattered, Inspector. Let me think. I've worked at the Grand Colonial for about as long as it's been around. Prior to that, I lived in Byzantium, but I always felt like it was missing something. And that something turned out to be corpses. Byzantium has much in the way of luxury, but examining the dead does not rank amongst the preferred activities of the elite. Wow, sounds like you enjoy being a coroner. Absolutely. Usually, I'm just a medical practitioner, so I almost never get to deal with anything as unique or as quiet as a corpse. The most interesting thing I saw prior to this was the back of Mr. Woolrich's throat after he blew out his vocal cords shouting at an attendant. If I weren't here, I'd be back in my quarters, rewatching Byzantium in the spring or working on my automatic Sprat peeler. Okay, well, thanks for your time. Always a pleasure, Inspector. Yep, I'm definitely going to love this DLC. I am enjoying this already. Thank you for watching this episode. This is Lover of Ladies, and I'll see you next week.